Jackrabbits. Yeah, you would always like to beat guys who beat you at home and get an opportunity to beat them at home. You know, you always have to think about these trips. When we go out there, it is a haul to get all the way out there to the Dakotas. But then when we turn around, they got to come all the way out of here. So you would expect or at least hope that the Jackrabbits would be a little sluggish tonight. Maybe we could jump on them early. Yeah, that, that's usually a problem when you're involved in basketball games. The travel does have uh, its disadvantages. You know, we're not the NBA. We don't have private planes and <laughs> reclining seats. But you do have to understand that travel does play a big part. In the first matchup back in early January, January. It was South Dakota State winning this one by 13 points, uh, by a score of 73 to 60, and they just crushed the Dons on the board, 36 to 22. IBFW's got to rebound tonight. Yeah, it seems like a reoccurring theme. Every time we look at the scouting reports, every team we play seems crash the board, sports, 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 and I think the Dons will do pretty good because we normally play fully well at home. Kai Williams is the name that you're going to want to familiarize yourself with as we go into this game. He is the top gun for South Dakota State. The Dons will have to stop him tonight if they want to come out of here with a W. Got two games at home this week. You got to win them both, and it starts right here tonight against the Jackrabbits. We will have starting lineups and tip-off for you when we come back. Oh Most kids, I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I want the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> Go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. The shirts say it. The team plays it. The fans scream it. Arnie's Army is on a mission bringing national caliber Division I IPFW men's volleyball action to Fort Wayne. Tickets to these and all the games are available now at the Gate Center Ticket Office or at the door. It's IPFW Mastodon Basketball, live from the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. Brought to you by College 5 Sports on my network. Digital broadcast 33.2, Comcast 252. And welcome back inside the Coliseum. We are getting ready to get started in this game between IPFW and South Dakota State. The Dons, as we mentioned, losers of two in a row coming in. They have this game and a game against North Dakota State coming up. So that is, uh, it's paramount that they protect home court this week, get back on a winning streak because they're now five and four in the Summit League play. They need to get back to 500 and get back over 500 as they get ready for another three game road trip. Yeah, and the Dons are the only team in the conference that hasn't won a game on the road yet. They're right. 11 on the road, so we've got to make sure that we make every home game count. Seven and two here at the Coliseum, so hopefully that will hold up over the course of the next two games. Uh, the Jackrabbits come in, losers of five of their last seven. So this is a team that they should be able to beat. The Dons need to win this game. The Jackrabbits are dead last in the Summit League standing. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. Clint Sargent and Garrett Callahan are in the backcourt of the front court. Kai Williams, he's the one that you want to keep your eye on. Had a double-double um, against the Dons the first go-round. Anthony Cordova and then Ben Barron are the round out your starting five for the Jackrabbits. As for IPFW, as we take a look at their starting lineup, DeWitt Scott, Zach Plackmeyer, Ben Botts, David Carson, and Jerron Burrows are your starting lineup. So we are about ready to tip it off here. And, uh, you know, Keon, I think that the, the main goal, if you're Dane Fife and the Dons, you want to get out to an early lead and you want to hit the boards. Yeah, you got to be intense about playing a team that you just lost to. And so you want to make a statement and you want to win definitely the first five minutes of the game. All right, we are about set here as we are getting ready to tip it off. IPFW in the white and blue. The Jackrabbits in the yellow and blue trim. And we are set to get it started. All right. 
tip controlled by the Jackrabbits. And they get it into the high post right away, trying to work the high-low game. Barron then going to swing it over to Sargent. Sargent down low to, and a shot no good. In and out for Anthony Cordova, but it's going to stay with South Dakota State. Triggering the inbound. Sargent, they get it back to him. Now down low, Barron, jump hook. Right over Carson, no problem. Can't get him to him that deep in the lane and expect to be able to defend him. I think I know this real early, Tommy, is when I'm looking at these teams, uh, sometimes we have mismatches in other areas, but it seems as uh, inch for inch and size for size, this team matches up pretty well with us, so we'll see how the Dons handle it. And a foul called out on the perimeter. DeWitt Scott trying to take it to the hole. And actually, that is going to be on Kai Williams. It'd be nice to see him get into a little bit of early foul trouble. And here's Plackmeyer into the lane. Kick out to DeWitt. Trying to go down low to Burroughs and not a good post entry pass. Goes out of bounds. Seems early that Coach Fife is concerned about getting the ball inside as opposed to taking all range shots. Mentioned Williams, 19 points and 10 rebounds back in early January when these two teams met. Swinging it outside, now down low, Barron. And he goes reverse and a quick four points for the big fella, Ben Barron, 6'7 forward out of Victor, Iowa. Here's DeWitt. On the wing, kick out, Carson, three ball, on the way, in and out, no good. Don still looking to get on the board. Down four nothing early here. Jack Rabbit's patient. Now they get it to Williams on the block. His first shot of the night, off back iron, no good. Here come the Dons the other way. Plackmeyer over to DeWitt. Seems as if the Dons are having a little trouble with the ball out top. But now they're able to get the ball inside. We'll see what they do with the uh, inbound pass. Looks like a foul, but no foul call. And some bodies getting banged down low. Dane Fife all over the ref as we come down to the other end as IPFW still looking for their first bucket of the game. And Burroughs may have gotten away with a hook down low on Barron, but they don't call it either. Well, the reason why the, left, the ref let that shot go is because usually that's a bad angle for a pass to be at the top of the key, trying to make that a low post entry pass from the, uh, from the top. Early portions of this game on what is supposed to be a very snowy evening. We're hoping to get in and get out. What's over no overtime in this one? We right. might be here for a while. I know the kids are hoping for no school tomorrow as well. <laughs> Out of bounds, Burroughs another turnover and quickly uh, two turnovers for IPFW. So here come the Jackrabbits. Sargent up top to Barron. They're trying to get it down low into Cordova. Not able to do so, so they get it out to Williams. Ball reversal, shot by Sargent, gonna be an air ball. Here come the Dons, Ben Botts running the show into the front court. Blackmire, baseline, kick, DeWitt, no. Off back iron, Burrows the big offensive board. Dons are really struggling from the floor offensively. Not able to get much into the basket. Seems like it's a lid on it right now. And another one in and out, Plackmeyer. Quick over five from the field for IPFW. Cordova, ball reversal, has an open shot, nice penetration runner, gonna come up air ball, and then Cordova appear to step on the end line. It's gonna go back over to IPFW. Downs definitely didn't get that start that we talked about, but uh, this South Dakota team definitely Go over the uh, keys to win here for South Dakota State. Obviously, defend. You want to be able to uh, 
to get out and defend on the perimeter. The IBFW's got great perimeter shooting, and they want to rebound as well. I think that's a key on both sides. Yeah. Definitely doesn't look like a two and seven team. Nine on the shot clock. Carson goes to the baseline. Five on the shot clock. Shot is up and in. IBFW's on the board. The one thing we'll understand today, Tommy, is that these guys may be a two and seven team, but one thing they do know is they can beat the Dons because they've done it before. And they're going to play with some confidence. Yeah, they definitely have some confidence coming in here. And they need a win just as badly as IPFW does. Dons find themselves right in the middle of the Summit League standings, basically, as Williams now, excuse me, check that, shot up and good by Dale Moss, who was fresh in the game for Sargent. 6-2, early lead for the Jackrabbits here at the Coliseum. Burroughs slicing to the bucket, can't get the drive to go, though. Nice move to get there, but you got to finish. This is Mohamed Berté out on the perimeter. Swings it left side to Callahan. And now Williams right around Carson right there. Seems like the Dons have to pick up some of the defensive intensity and not be so much worried about allowing what's happening on the uh, offensive end to dictate what happens on the defensive end. All right, official timeout on the floor. The first five minutes and change of this game, not pretty for IPFW. Find themselves an 8-2 hole, see if they can dig themselves out when we come back. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Hi, I'm Russell Simmons. Today I want to talk to you about a very important subject, cruelty to animals. Emmy was a victim of cruelty and someone did something about it. Someone called the ASPCA and put an end to it, because Emmy can't talk. The fact is, animals are abused all over this country and people sit by and do nothing. It's not slick or fly or cool or none of that. It's just cruel. If you're aware of any animal abuse, go to ASPCA.org to find out what you can do. Now, make a difference. She can't do it for herself. Tommy Shegler, Keon Henderson back inside the Coliseum IPFW in an early hole. These are the things they're not doing, the things they need to win, Keon. Yeah, the Macedon's keys tonight are to defend, to protect the glass, and take care of the rock, take care of the ball. And it doesn't seem like we're doing any of those right now, uh, with the exception of probably a limited amount of turnovers. But we've definitely got a rebound because we're missing a lot of shots. Yeah, make some shots might be added to that list. One and six early on. Nice pass from DeWitt, but great recovery from defense. But Burroughs still able to put it up and in off the glass. And he had three guys on him. I tell you, one thing that's encouraging is even with the bad start that the Dons have had, we're only down four points. Seems like uh, South Dakota has a larger rotation than we do. They've already played 10, 11 guys, uh, but we seem to be able to hold on. Tip in underneath by Berte, I believe, on the tip in. It was Palakar getting to the getting to the hole, missed it. Now Chris Perkins providing a bit of a spark off the bench, gets to the rack on the other side. One thing that Dean and I pointed out last game, seems like when Perkins sticks that tongues out, he come to play, and I just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Three on the way, good. Nothing but bottom of the net for Callahan. Garrett Callahan. Here good. Jakari Johnson also off the bench. Good to see Michi Johnson back at yeah. home. I like his game. And he's into the lane right now, runner good. Now the lid's starting to come off it as the Don's now four for nine after starting out one for six. They've made their last three straight shots and they find themselves down five points right now. 
sometimes when you play a team that's beat you, you come out and you try to go too hard and nothing goes for you. You just need to settle down and relax and get in the Florida game. Turnover inside. Burroughs comes up with an outlet to Perkins. Here's Michi. And a foul down low. That one's going to go against Callahan, I believe. It will be against Callahan. Third team foul for the Jackrabbits. First for Callahan. Tell you, Ben, uh, ben Baran from South Dakota just walked here, walked past us, and I could have swore he looked about eight feet tall. <laughs> They have him listed as 6'7". He does a lot play a large 6'7", yeah. I'll give you that. Maybe that means barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Michi knocks in the first free throw. Second one on the way, rattles around and through. Don's back to within three. After being down early by as many as six. Here's Baran working on Burroughs. He had some success early on. This time Burroughs gets the better of things and loose ball foul. I think we're going to have a foul on 42 on Thomas Bassett. That's already the 14th foul on the Jackrabbits. So Bassett's second, or uh, first, excuse me. So Don's a chance to pull to within one or maybe even tie with a three ball. Perkins gets it to go. Nice jumper. Nice pull up. Tell you how important Perkins is. Last home game against Oakland, he really came through. He really came through. That's going to be a foul down low on Demetrius Johnson. Yeah, it seems like uh, last few minutes at least, Don's really starting to attack. Made their last four straight shots after starting out ice cold in this one. Hard drive, it could have been a hard foul, but they're letting him play out there tonight. Perkins blocked down low by Barron, and here come the Jackrabbits. Nice seal. Barron, easy bucket down low, no problem for him. You're almost always going to get that basket. Whenever you can seal the defender on the top, free throw line extended and nobody's back, you're almost always going to get that. Six early points for him. Burroughs answering on the other end. So back and forth we go about midway through the first half here from the Memorial Coliseum. IPFW starting what they hope to be a real big week. They come in at 7-13 and 13 overall, 4-5 and five in the Summit League but two winnable games here in the Coliseum tonight and then Saturday afternoon and a turnover out of the perimeter. It'll go back over to the Dons. Timeout on the floor. We're going to take it with them. Dons down one, looking to go ahead for the first time tonight. See if they can do it when we come back. bringing national caliber Division I IPFW men's volleyball action to Fort Wayne. Tickets to these and all the games are available now at the Gate Center ticket office or at the door. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents. Factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales. You're looking at $2,400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. IPFW back to within one point here at the Coliseum. Tommy Shegler along with Keon Henderson. Don started out in this one ice cold but they've looked a lot better in the last five minutes. 
Well, I'll tell you what, this is what any coach would call an authentic seesaw battle. Up and down, up and down. Nobody's, nobody's setting the tone and setting the defensive uh, aura about themselves, but I'm hoping that the Downs will do it. I'm sure that's what Coach Fife said in the timeout. Here's Botts trying to come off a screen from DeWitt. Now gives it up to Witt. Demetrius crossover. Nice pass to Burroughs down low. That was pretty. Well, I tell you, that's what he brings, that, that in-control presence to the team. Don's first lead of the night, 16 to 15. We are almost right at the halfway point. Big block down low by Michi now. Get it back to him. Let him run it. Oh, and a charge called in the lane by Burroughs. You almost have to stop, observe your options, look left, look right, and make that bounce pass. That's going to be a charge every time. Yeah, it was a little bit of an out of control uh, break there by IPFW, but good thought and love what uh, Johnson is bringing to the table so far tonight. This is my first time seeing Johnson since he's been hurt here at home, and he looks pretty good. He's bearing out top. Gets it over to Sargent. Cordova and losing it down low. Barron, he tried to go up with it before he had it. Did you check that? That was Bassett with the, uh, with the pass down low as Scott Nagy is really rotating his guys. You mentioned that earlier, Keon. He's had several guys in the game already. And Trap almost causes a turnover into the scorer's table here in front of us. Goes Sargent, but uh, Dons will retain possession, 21 on the shot clock. Well, we don't have a good team, and that's not a knock on South Dakota, but when you don't have an upper tier team, then one of the strategies is to use a lot of guys to wear out the, strat uh, the opposition, and that's probably what the coach is doing. Barron gets called for a foul down low. And that is going to be his first, already the team's fifth. Man, we are going to be in the bonus here before you know it. It's always good to get free points. I guess why they call them free throws. First one missed by Burroughs. Want to get what you can from the line, watching my alma mater, West Virginia, last night. Uh, we had more points from the line at one point in the second half than we had from the field. Yeah, if you can imagine yeah. that. <laughs> I remember playing at West Virginia. Um, and, uh, and you have nothing but fond memories of the Morgantown faithful. I'll tell you what, that the ceiling in that place seemed about 7,000 feet high. <laughs> yeah, only shot 20% from the field last night. So <laughs> all-time school record low. Let's hope that doesn't happen to IBFW tonight. Yeah. And it doesn't look like it's going to as they've Went from a one and six start from the field to a seven and 13 from the field right now as Sargent hits a turnaround jumper and the Jackrabbits go back in front. Blocked down low, called on one of the South Dakota defenders. And it's Kai Williams, his second foul already for the leading scorer on this team. Well, you had mentioned it, uh, we talked about it earlier about the seesaw battle. Both teams right now are shooting 53% from the field. Very even. Yeah, very even. You can't give a team 50% from the field. You've got to have them in the uh, upper 30s, hopefully the low 40s, and then you'll be able to see a difference on the scoreboard. Here's Jakari Johnson knocking in the first free throw and checking back into the ball game. Coming out will be Williams with the two fouls as well as Bassett. And heading back out on the floor is Dale Moss along with Anthony Cordova. I was talking to Dane Fife on the phone earlier this week, and man, the frustration was just coming through from the other side. And he said, "Look, you know, we just got to get tougher, and we either got to find tough, we got to make them tougher, or I got to start recruiting tougher." Is is what he said to me because uh, you know, he was not been pleased with the effort that uh, the Dons have put forth, especially on the road. You mentioned they haven't won a game yet away from the Coliseum. Well, one of the greatest things in the world is your perception becomes your reality. And Dane Fife was a Big Ten basketball player. He right. knows what hard-nosed basketball is all about. Night offensive board by Dale Moss to put it back in. And three on the way. Plackmeyer can't find the range. Offensive board for the little guy. Perkins on the weak side of things. He gets in the lane but can't hit. 
on the baby. Here's Sargent. Almost got his pocket picked twice by Perkins. And here's Barron. Barron fires a three. No good. I'm not sure if that's his shot, although he's taken a few of them already tonight. Goes out of bounds. It'll be back over to IPFW. Sargent's going to come out of the ball game. Polarka, Michael Polarka, checking back in. He's a freshman, 5'10". And uh, you might see IPFW trying to take advantage of his size. We've got some big guards out on the floor right now. Well, you talk about toughness, Tommy. You know, some coaches would agree and disagree. Toughness can be taught. Some say toughness cannot be taught. But it's, it's actually a state of mind. And it's, it's what you go out and do every day. It's who you are and it's who you become. And then it becomes contagious to the whole ball club. And that's something that the coaching staff has just been trying to figure out how to get through to these guys and trying to teach them. And DeWitt late coming over on the help side gets called for the foul underneath on Barron. Good attempt, just too far into the basket. Timeout on the floor. We'll keep mentioning it. Seesaw back and forth right now. It's the Jackrabbits who are in front 19 to 18. More of the first half from IPFW when we come back. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility, leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. <laughs> Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy with affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne, your graduate university. Hey, we'd like to take a minute and thank today's game sponsor, 1860 or 816 Pike and Slice, located at 816 South Calhoun Street in Fort Wayne. For fine pizza and drinks, it's 816 Pint and Slice. Actually, one of my wife's favorite places to go eat. I can go for a slice right now. <laughs> All right, so we are back here at the Coliseum and coming back out of timeout, Jackrabbits at the line. It's Ben Barron, the 6'7 senior, who has had a good first half here against the Dons and swishes his first attempt through. Second one. On the way, and Barron has his eighth point of the first half. South Dakota State up by three. Demetrius Johnson looks it over, looks it over. Guarded closely by Moss. Boy, they're challenging all the way out to midcourt. Botts, easy jumper for him on the baseline. When you play Division One basketball, every night is a battle. You have to play hard. And the Dons do not have the same intensity that they play with against Oakland. If they play with that intensity at any point in this game, we will get a lead, and they will not be able to recover from it. All right, here is Callahan into the lane. Rainbow goes. Garrett Callahan. Hey, you mentioned that Oakland game. I mean, that really the win of the season. Just a fantastic win, 77 to 69. Three. Right box is getting hot. Ties this ball game up. But IBFW has not won since that game against Oakland. So, got to find a way to get a W. You know, Tommy, I know you're very well aware. You know, you've got a great basketball mind. 
with a charge taken right there. Looks like it's going to be IPFW's ball. Burroughs looks like he took that charge, but what ends up happening is, is in Division One basketball, and I always say this, you cannot play to the level of your competition. You've got to play hard every night. You, know, you can't look at a 2-7 and seven team and say, okay, we can take a day off because that team will beat you. Right. And this team has already beat us once, and they, can, and they think they can do it again. We're not going to be given this game. We've got to go and take it. Do you think that that's something that IPFW falls into more often than you see other teams? Or when you watch this program, are they about on pace with what other programs and kids that are 18 to 21 are as Johnson misses a lay-in? But I think that uh, basketball, and especially Division One level, it's historic. It's cultural. It is. Uh, and uh, there are certain places where hard play is expected or you're not even recruited. And so uh, I think that's what Coach Fife was talking about when he said either they've got to become tougher or I've got to get tougher guys. Right. Another chance. Burroughs, another block, another block from the backside by Johnson, and IBFW comes up with it. What a fantastic defensive stand. About four blocks in that possession for the Don. Let's see if they can capitalize. Ball out of bounds, going to stay with IPFW. It was Sargent getting a paw on it. Yeah, you look back at uh, that meeting early in January, we mentioned 36 to 22, the advantage for the Jackrabbits on the board. It was a 13 point win out there. Their only win ever against the Dons. And so IPFW wants revenge for that loss. And this is Burroughs working on Barron. It's been a nice pass to Carson. Draws the foul, but he can't finish. What was impressive, though, that even though he took the contact, he attempted to use the left hand, which gave him an opportunity to make a shot. He didn't make it, but it was a great idea. Since he's become available on this team, I mean, he has been big for them. He has. And he has had some very good games since right around Christmas time. Here is David. First free throw is good. IPFW moves back in front. Berte comes in for Barron. Scott Nagy into it with the refs. He is a little upset on the <laughs> eight team fouls compared to three for IPFW. And the response of the referee was classic. He said, just tell him to quit fouling. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Barron's second foul. So now Kai Williams and Barron, the Williams definitely their best player, and Barron has probably had the best game so far tonight, both sitting on the bench with foul problems. Here's Moss to Sargent. Turn around, quick jumper, no good. Gets his own rebound, put back, no problem. Oh, quick put back is missed. I started to say no problem, because boy, that was an easy bunny, but he's not able to do it, and here come the Dons. Bots, three, no good. Carson fights for it, and that could have been a foul and should have been on Callahan That's down a, low. Definitely a foul, he let that one go. They always won. Here's Moss down low, Berte. Guarded by Burroughs, and the hook is good into the lane. Sandy, South Dakota State back in front. Now Burroughs wants his shot at Berte. Backing him down, backing him down. In off glass and good. You know, I'm starting to get the feeling, Tommy, when the Dons are ready, they'll do it. We can win this game. Yeah, you got a feeling that there's a big run in there because I don't feel like they've been that sharp so far and yet we're up by one. Carson almost steals it away, but he loses it out of bounds. That was almost another turnover. Luckily, he didn't get a, a foul called on him. Whenever you hack down like that, usually the ref calls a foul, but I think he knew he owed him one. <laughs> yeah, Scott Nagy is uh, probably somewhere around the edge of uh, getting, getting into it with the refs a little bit uh, too much. He was very upset after that call. Burroughs gets a Paul on it, and coming away with it is Botts. Perfect day. Kai Williams gets multiple fouls. Coach gets kicked out of the game. Great day. <laughs> Botts, great pass. nice pass, and oh. hard foul down low. That's almost intentional, it looks like, Tommy, but maybe they made a play on the ball. I, don't, I couldn't see it. And Scott Nagy right now, right in front of us, getting after the ref pretty good, and 
He's I got to think he's, he's close. close. <laughs> <laughs> he's he, close. He is teetering on the edge. <laughs> we will see what happens. Bots to Burroughs and then just absolutely pummeled down low. He will be at the line when we come back. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. I can no longer make my mortgage payment. We won't be able to make our mortgage. I can't pay my mortgage right now. Life throws everyone lots of curves. Sometimes it's a loss of income or an expensive health emergency. If that happens to you, call the people expecting your payment and let them know they'll want to work something out. So at the first sign of payment trouble, call. They can help, but only if they know you need help. To learn more, visit HomeLoanLearningCenter.com. That's HomeLoanLearningCenter.com. All right, Jerome Burroughs has started to make his present felt here in the first half, working against Berte down low. Those two have gone back and forth as this first half has gone on, and in this play, he's able to get the body position needed to back down and get the leg in, and now it's Kino at the line after really getting hammered before the timeout there. He rattles the first one home. Dons now have a two-point lead. Coach was into it with another ref over here. I hope he makes all three mad. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing the rounds. This guy hasn't been over here that much. <laughs> Second one, Burroughs, good. And Dons, the Dons are up by the largest margin of the night at just three points. They've played from behind for the majority of the first half or even. And we've talked several times in past broadcasts about this one, Keon. The, the last you know, four or five minutes of the half, each half, very important as Botts fights for it, gets a long rebound. Jakari Johnson, three ball, no, not even close. Bassett comes down with the rebound, outlets to Moss. I'll tell you what, Moss is standing straight up dribbling the ball. Somebody needs to get in and make him do something with it. Berte thought about the shot, now down low to Bassett, and Bassett gets it stolen away as he goes up with it. Out of bounds. We have a great vantage point here being right next to the uh, visitor's bench, and Scott Nagy is just not a pleased man right now. In his 13th year as a head coach at South Dakota State, I'm sure he's gotten a technical or two in his day, and he might be getting ready to add another one. That's got to be some kind of record across the country. Same place, 13 years? Yes, yeah, Not that's pretty good. Yep. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Berte working on Burroughs. Here is Sargent. Crossover, pull up, nice move. Can't hit the shot, though. Long rebound out to Moss. Fade away, no. Man, he should have taken that up strong. But either way, the Dons come away with it. And now can build on the lead. Demetrius oh. to the rack. Can't get it to go, but it's fouled. Boy, you knew about a dribble into that drive that that was the thought right there. <laughs> Tell you what, he took off on one leg and jumped off of that bad knee. Wonder what would have happened if it was a good one. <laughs> Gonna go to the line. That is number two on Mohamed Berte. Senior from the Ivory Coast. Don's really shooting well from the line tonight as well. Now, 8 of 11 from the line. Puts us right about 72, 73%. Uh, you'll want to do that. That's a good percentage. And Michi gets both of them to go. Don's lead now out to five points here from the Coliseum. Looking to end a two game slide and get back to 500 in the Summit League. Palarka swings it over. 
Here is Bassett. Now back to Polarka in between the rings. Dribble drive, fade away. Wow, what a shot put in by Callahan. Garrett Callahan, that was a nice, nice shot. When he spent the opposite way, that looks remind me of a little Kobe Bryant move there a little bit. Yeah, that was, that was pretty. Burroughs to Carson. David's three, no. Weak side rebound. Michi back up with it, and one! He felt that. He had his mouth wide open, screaming. Everybody's bumping up against the chest. Those are the plays we need. Boy, what a play there. Carson's three comes off. And look at the defense just converge on Demetrius. He's able to put it up high off the window and get it to go. And that is the third foul on Berté. So you got quite a few guys with foul issues at this point for the Jackrabbits. You have one guy with three and two guys, or three guys, I should say, with two fouls. Maybe that's why the coach is yelling. <laughs> now they just got to stop fouling. Yeah, that's what the ref said. <laughs> Pilarka is fouled by Bots here on the drive. That's only the fourth team foul. Check that uh, fifth team foul on the Dons. No, I was right the first time. 14 foul. First on bots. Four for them. We're already in a double bonus. Yep. And now they're starting to make them up a little bit. If I look at South Dakota's coach, he, he still said something even when he got the call. <laughs> now you see the team fouls there right now. Double bonus for the Dons. The South Dakota State has 10, only five for IPFW. It's going to be even in about 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah. And now they're starting to rack him up, and I, I think this is uh, making the Jackrabbit coaching staff even more annoyed. <laughs> As uh, Luttrell gets a second free throw, or uh, second foul called on him in about 10 seconds. A little bit of a, where were you earlier type of attitude. <laughs> travel. And a travel called on Engen, Mark Engen. Engins into the ball game for the first time tonight. He is the tallest player on this team at 6'10". I was just about to say he's even bigger than the other big guy that just walked past us. He's just a sophomore out of Minnesota. Oh, and that one thought to be off by, or uh, Ben Botts thought that was off the Jackrabbits and had a chance to save it, but didn't. Either way, it's going to go back over to South Dakota State. We're under a minute to play. Don's up six. They were down by as many as six in this half. Callahan, three, no good. Rebound by the big fella almost, taken away by the small guy down low. Playing in there with the trees. Bot steals it away. Maybe this is one of those two for one situations, maybe, Tommy. He should get it up. It's too late now. Yep. Now they want to milk it for as much as they can. Demetrius. Kick to wit. The senior. Three. Good. That guy is not afraid to shoot it from anywhere. Biggest lead of the ball game. Time winding down. Let's get a defensive stop and get into the locker room. High screen. Moss kicks. Pilarco, not a Moss buzzer, no. Dons head to the locker room up 36-27. They close the first half very impressively, down by as many as six. They head to the locker room up nine. When we come back, we are going to look at the stats from the first half, talk about this one a little bit. Stay with, them. Stay with us, plenty more to come here from the Coliseum. Most kids, I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education 
and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's gotta feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. You might be surprised to know the biggest dangers your pet faces are everyday dangers, like drinking from puddles, being boarded, squirrels in the park, and fleas and ticks. Being a pet is risky business. That's why it's important for every pet to receive a risk assessment and wellness exam twice a year. A risk assessment from your veterinary professionals helps create a unique risk profile for your dog or cat. Your veterinarian can then develop a disease protection plan that's right for your pet and the disease threats in your area. Best of all, twice a year exams help your veterinarian detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So reduce the risks. Contact your veterinarian today for your pet's wellness exam because being a pet is risky business. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. The shirts say it. The team plays it. The fans scream it. Arnie's Army is on a mission bringing national caliber Division I IPFW men's volleyball action to Fort Wayne. Tickets to these and all the games are available now at the Gate Center Ticket Office or at the door. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum Anum? Agaricus Bisporus? Huh? Allium Sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. <laughs> Funny. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Click up a button. Welcome back. Halftime at the Coliseum. The Dons with a 36 to 27 lead at the half after being down by as many as six early on in this ball game, they came roaring back and boy, they've looked good here in the last several minutes. Tommy Shagler with you along with Keon Henderson. Keon, uh, they did the things they needed. They really started to attack in that second 10 minutes. Yeah, they did. And I saw a lot of guys being aggressive and that's why we were getting so many fouls. And anybody will tell you the referees always favor the aggressors. Right. So when you see a lot of calls being made for us, it's probably a byproduct of our aggressiveness. And when you see a lot of them being called against us, it's because we lack aggression. Yeah, really, the free throw line been a huge difference in this ball game. Only two attempts so far for the Jackrabbits, while meanwhile, the Dons are 10 of 13 from the line. So an eight-point swing, it's a, it's a nine-point game right now. So uh, that's been huge so far in the first half. And let's take a look at how we arrived at this point here at halftime as we take a look at your first half stats here, or uh, first half highlights, I should say, from this game. Of course, the band, always a big highlight out here at the Coliseum, doing it up right as they always do. And as we take a look at the stats, I was right the first time. 48% for the Dons from the floor. Impressive considering the fact, Keon, that they started out one of six from the floor. To get to 48%, pretty good. Well, what, what, if you look at the stats, what you find out is that they've taken uh, about eight more shots than us, but we've made the same amount of shots, you know, field goal wise as them, which increases our percentage. Neither one of the teams are shooting well from the three point line, but I believe you made the uh, paramount difference about the free throw line. Right. And that's where we, uh, we've got our advantage. Also, the Don's able to get a couple of key guys into foul trouble for the Jackrabbits. Kai Williams talked about him in the pregame, and we haven't really been able to talk about him since the game started. So he got two quick fouls, and he was not a factor for the rest of the first half. So that was also big for IPFW as we went through this first half. And as we take a look at the individual scores, Demetrius Johnson, to me so far, has been the star of this ball game coming off the bench. He's looked fantastic. He always is. And you know, he's a guy who always plays under control. Uh, you can probably look at him and tell he's not 100%, but he's still going hard. And you know, effort always can get you through things. He's uh, five for five from the free throw line. He's also got 
five assists in this ball game to go along with his nine points. So he's had an all-around great game off the bench. And, of course, Burroughs continues to be fantastic. This game very key when you look at the Summit League and the way that things are working out. IBFW sitting right smack in the middle of things after a couple of losses uh, with Western Illinois and IUPUI boy George Hill. He is a load, and the Dons found that out uh, firsthand. 33 points the other night against IPFW. He was named the Summit League Player of the Week. So that, uh, that is the way things look, as you saw South Dakota State down there at the bottom. So this is a game that IPFW has to win. They know that going in. There was probably extra pressure. Maybe the reason that we saw them get out to such a slow start. And one thing that impresses me is that this is our first year in the conference. And uh, normally you would see a first-year team probably at the bottom of the bracket right. with no expectations. Right. Here we are in our first year right in the middle with an opportunity to win some games. And a sin, I think Coach Fife, you know, he may not be totally happy, but he finds some pleasure in that. Let's take a look at, uh, at the first half highlights, if we can, uh, and start looking at exactly what what happened uh, in this game early on. As we mentioned a couple of different times, uh, the Jackrabbits came out of the blocks uh, very strong in this game. Dons could not make a bucket early on, but then we put Demetrius Johnson in. He started to spark the offense a little bit. You see the drive, and then Keno was great down low, 10 points in the first half. Uh, and then we got to the midway point of the first half, and boy, we saw a lot of seesaw action. That was Sargent with a nice turnaround. Barron not able to get it done, but Moss comes in with the putback. By the way, the Jackrabbits with a 10 rebound advantage in the uh, in the game at this point at the half, 22 to 12. Ben Botts though was able to come back and get the Dons on the board at the other end, but man, the Jackrabbits wouldn't go away for a while until towards the end of the half, the Dons really started to get things going. And uh, here's Berté, and it was Kino and Berté kind of going back and forth at it a little bit as we went into the latter stages of the first half. Here you see Burroughs on the other end. This play was right after the Berté bucket. Kino gonna be able to back down seal and no problem off the window. Don's really starting to extend the lead late in the half, but this was probably the best shot of the first half. That was Callahan, that nice spin move. And then more Demetrius, the nice put back. That was probably the most emotional play of the first half with the three point play and then DeWitt, the three ball to end the first half. Nine point difference at the half. That's where we stand right now. We're going to take a break. When we come back on the Halftime Show, we are going to continue to talk this one over, talk about what the Dons need to do in the next 20 minutes to come out of here with a win. We'll be right back. to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. glycerides or trays have to do to get noticed. Heart disease and stroke? Really? We should pay her more attention. Normal triglycerides are below 150. High triglycerides increase your risk of heart disease. And if you're a woman, that risk goes up even more. After standing in the shadows of good and bad cholesterol, triglyceride, also known as the forgotten fat, is ready to share the spotlight and the attention. Next time you have your cholesterol or blood fats tested, ask your doctor about the role triglycerides play in your heart health. Remember to ask your doctor about the good, the bad, and the forgotten fat. For more information on all of your blood fats, the good, the bad, and the forgotten, go to ForgottenFat.com. And remember, normal triglycerides are under 150. This message brought to you by Sister to Sister, working together for healthy hearts. 
Coming up this month on IPFW Up Close, do you remember how you paid for college? How are your kids going to pay for it? Would you like some help? Well, we'll talk about financial aid and that all-important FAFSA document. Are you looking for a quick cultural getaway? How does Shakespeare and the Windy City sound? Going green is more than a marketing slogan for a lot of people. See how an IPFW Habitat for Humanity project is using sustainable design to build one family's dream home on Up Close Sundays at noon. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Back at the Coliseum, we need to talk about where we're at, and you see it right there on the screen. 36 to 27 is your halftime score. IPSW a nine point lead, but we need to talk about where we're going. Keon Henderson, tell me what you think IPFW needs to do in the next 20 minutes to end the two-game slide, get back in the winning ways. First of all, mental toughness. You got to start off with mental toughness. You go into the locker room, your knees get stiff, uh, the, uh, the adrenaline kind of subsides. You have to come out mentally tough. Second of all, you've got to start how you finished. We didn't start this game well, but we finished it well. Right. And so we've got to start this first uh, five-minute war and win it. And then the last thing, I believe, is defense and rebounding defensive rebound. If we can do that, I believe we can pull out with a victory. No second chance opportunities and hop right on them when we come out of here, out of the locker room. I think we could really put this one away with a quick run. One more break when we come back. Second half action between the Mastodons and the Jackrabbits from the Coliseum. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents. Factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. What's it like when you hear your calling? you to go halfway around the world, to share your skills, to serve people you've never met, to do things you never thought you could. What will you do when you hear your calling? Peace Corps, life is calling. How far will you go? The shirts say it. The team plays it. The fans scream it. Arnie's Army is on a mission bringing national caliber Division I IPFW men's volleyball action to Fort Wayne. Tickets to these and all the games are available now at the Gate Center ticket office or at the door. Back inside the Coliseum, closing moments of halftime. The crowd that has come out and banked on the fact that the weather guys are right and the storm isn't going to start for, oh, another hour, hour and a half. Uh, right now enjoying themselves. IBFW with a nine-point lead. 
Tommy Schegler along with Keon Henderson. IPFW riding a two-game losing streak as we've talked about throughout this game. A couple of other scores from around the Summit League right now. IUPUI is all over Southern Utah, 47-22 uh, to 22 at the half. Also at the half, North Dakota State, who comes here on Saturday, up by five at Oakland. So that could be an upset in the making. And uh, IPFW obviously here, the other game uh, in the Summit League, nine point lead as the Dons appeared to turn it over, but actually it's gonna be a foul call. And somebody got up under, I think it was Callahan getting called for the foul. I tell you, that was a disaster in the making. I am just glad that it didn't come out the way it could have. Callahan caught him real nicely. And here's DeWitt coming off the curl, no problem. Beautiful shot, come off the grill, curl, free throw line extended, no defense there, nice pull up, great shot. That is definitely the way you draw it up, nice fluid motion. Here's Key Williams, who we haven't seen a lot of tonight, leading scorer on this team, but had two fouls early in the first half and sat in the pine the rest of the way. Averaging just over 12 a game. Barron also back in there. Dons had problems with him early on, and Carson called for a bump on the drive. Had we been in the NBA, that would have been a continuation. Yeah, that would have been good. First on David, first team foul. Should be interesting to see if uh, early on here in the second half the refs try to equal out the, the fouls called from the first half to the second half. Deep in the lane, getting the ball. No good on the shot was Cordova, but a put back by Barron down low. This is Division I basketball, and uh, South Dakota is not going to quit. We got to take it. Nice pass by Plackmeyer, but Burroughs can't finish. Here come the Jackrabbits. You got to make those shots. I mean, even when you absorb the contact, when you've got a, a two-second head shot, head start on the shot, you got to make it. Cordova cross court. Williams can't find anything. And three on the way by DeWitt. No. Up and down action early portions of the second half. Bounce pass, a nice one. Nice pass again, but blocked from behind was Cordova by Scott. And a whistle. Looks like we got something. Oh, we got some blood underneath of uh, David Carson's eye. Must have gotten scratched down low. He will have to come off of the floor, be attended to by the trainer. Didn't really understand why the whistle came at first until I saw David. He must have gotten scratched pretty good because he had blood coming all the way down the side of his face. Well, as an IPFW fan, you would you ask yourself then, where's the foul, ref? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He didn't get that, uh, you know, by accident. Here, here comes Plackmire and DeWitt. Witt working on Cordova. That seems like a mismatch. He should be able to go right around him. Instead, kicks to a spotted up to win Scott, and he drops it in. Excellent play. Drive and kick. Basic basketball. And that conversation I had with Coach Fife earlier this week, we, we talked a little bit about DeWitt, and he said, you know, it's not that DeWitt's playing badly this year. It's just that we haven't been able to get our inside game in. Nice block by the senior as we talk about him. It'll stay with the Jackrabbits, but uh, and he's just mentioning that we haven't been able to get the inside game going the way that we would like to. And DeWitt is a spot up shooter. And, and, you know, he's not great at creating off the dribble. We need to be able to get it to him where he's got a good look at it. And that was a perfect example of it right there. Nice drive by Key Williams. Good adjustment. Well, I tell you what, it's almost uh, imperative to recognize that when you have a spot up shooter, you almost always have to have a big man who draws the defense and attention away from him. Yep. Foul down low on Dale Moss. And Jack Rabbit coaching staff thought that was a charge. The inside game is inconsistent. The three point shooting will be inconsistent. The more consistent the inside, the more consistent the outside. I've been impressed though with uh, with the way that Burroughs has played this year. I mean, yeah. he doesn't have a lot of help down in the post, and he's not 
you know, a bulky guy. He's kind of a lank, lanky uh, post player, but I've been impressed. I mean, he's leading scorer on the team. I think he's done uh, quite a good job. You know, that's what I was talking to, uh, talking about earlier about toughness being the state of mind and who you are. I mean, you would look at his physique and say maybe he doesn't look tough, but I like to try to get down there with him. I'm <laughs> sure he'll show me how tough he is. All right, so back out to an 11-point lead for IPFW. One of two for Kino from the line. Now he comes away with the loose ball in the corner. Michi, Michi into the front court. It's the high screen. Now he's in a trap. Gets it out of there, and Reach going to be called on Williams. Going to be his third. Get up one more of those in the next six minutes. He'll have to sit to the end of the game. And tell you what, he, you know, a lot of cases, this Jackrabbit team just kind of plays with reckless abandon. I mean, that time they had a nice trap set up, and you know, they, they get a little overzealous with the pass out of the trap that they have to get the steal. I mean, it doesn't always lead to a steal. And uh, my old coach used to say, found the gates hustle. hustle. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just because you're hustling at it, it doesn't mean you're allowed to foul. Down low, Williams got good position, got an easy bucket out of it. Looked like Williams just woke up a little bit. You know, he scored a couple baskets. We've got to watch out for him so that he doesn't get loose and start feeling good in this game. All right, here's Burroughs working on Barron. Gets into the lane, nice bounce pass, no problem for DeWitt. Beautiful play by Jerome Burroughs. Barron, quick shot off glass, no, and Moss flies in and knocks into the back of Demetrius, and it's gonna be a foul. I can tell you what, I can see why. Uh, they have a lot of fouls and a lot of rebounds because they're going to go get the ball even if they foul. All right, Don's having an 11-point lead. We've reached the first media timeout of the second half, so we are going to take it. We will be back with more Mastodon basketball after this. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good. But with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Let's take a minute and thank today's game sponsor, 816 Pint and Slice, located at 816 South Calhoun Street in Fort Wayne. To find pizza and drinks, it's 816 Pint and Slice. Still could go for a slice, Tom. I still could as well. Maybe two now. Yeah. All right. We are back. Live action here from the Coliseum. Don's with the ball and an 11-point lead. And DeWitt Scott trying to make it more. Oh, had everything but the bucket. Almost a steal. Perkins back in the game. Going to harass Callahan for a while. Here's Polarka, snap pass down to Moss. He draws a nice foul on Demetrius. Demetrius is out of position there. Yeah, the help size defense is key, and he passed the ball right over the Demetrius' left ear. Yep. Yeah. That was Got a nice pass. Yeah, good pass. See David Carson there on the bench. Appears to be okay after being looked at by the trainers, patched up. Should be ready to go back in at some point. I should probably wait after the media to get him back in. Never know. That is just the third free throw attempt by the Jackrabbits tonight. Let's 
Second one is good. They're four for four from the line. If they can just get there a little bit more, then we might be in trouble. We just got to keep them off, slide our feet, play good defense, keep our hands to ourselves. Burroughs gets it on with Barron on his back. Spots, looks, double team coming, finds the open man. And Demetrius nailed on the uh, on the jumper, and then both players kind of ran into Coach Fife. Barron converts down low. We got some smash mouth basketball going here. Pretty sure Coach said we got to be physical, we got to be tough. We're not going to give us anything, we got to take it. Uh, even Coach Fife took a charge over there. <laughs> to a seven point game is key, key couple minutes here for IPFW. Burroughs looks it over, waits for the double. Now finds the open man, that's Botts. You don't want to leave him open. He's going to make it, it seems like every time he touches it, even though we know he misses it, just. You leave him good. that wide open, he's got to be shooting nine of 10. Yeah. <laughs> and Callahan, Fouled on the way to the bucket by Chris Perkins. That is team foul number four on three on IPFW. First on Perkins. 14 minutes here to go from the Memorial Coliseum. Dons have a 10 point lead. And a foul down low, I think, on Perkins again. I'll so, tell you what. Tommy, right now, this quarter, this half, I should say, scores 11 to 10. That's that seesaw thing we were talking about. We've got to come out and be aggressive and make sure that we can do what we did when we finished. DeWitt comes away with a steal. Bots and it. him and oh, Polarka get. Polarka, he elbowed him in the head. I don't know if the ref caught that. I think they ended up calling it on Polarka. They got tied up. Yeah, it did go, it did okay. go against Polarka. So they, they caught it. I wasn't sure who they were calling it on at first either. You know, the players have a tendency to accidentally on purpose hit people <laughs> and the ball is stolen from them, and that's what he did. Perkins into the lane, pulls. No on the pop. So you Dale Moss went up and got that and took it coast to coast. And Moss is found on the drive. I think they got Michi again. That'll be his third. A lot of fouls being called, 10 already, seven minutes in. Fans not pleased with, uh, <laughs> with some of the calls. The guy behind us sounds a little disgruntled, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. Polarka gets the inbound, gives off to Moss. Back to Polarka in between the rings. Now Sargent. Alarka into the lane, dribble drive, double clutch, and one. Tommy, I'm not a ref. I believe that was a travel before the bucket. Looked like a bit of a jump step, hop. Let's take a look at maybe uh, the four, five, or six steps that were allowed to Polarka <laughs> on this one. That's a dip. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's some definitely sliding around. I know there's ice outside, but there's no ice in this floor. I'm not sure if you're allowed to slide around like that. But, hey. Maybe the ref gave him a break because he knows it's ice under the floor. <laughs> Very good, Keon. Uh, three fouls on Perkins in the last minute and 30 seconds, by the way. And Don's got to watch himself. Up only eight right now. Bounce pass all alone, Kai Williams. Game five taking the field, Jackson approach, allowing his team just to play through it as opposed to calling a timeout. We'll see if the Dons can make a run. And they turn it over again. Here's Palarka, does not have numbers, but he's got Kai Williams and he draws the foul on DeWitt Scott. Dade might need a timeout. May need a timeout. You can see the frustration. And as we mentioned throughout the broadcast, we're right next here to the visitor's bench and uh, different feeling over here right now. A lot of clapping, a lot of chatter. They feel a run. A lot more excitement, 
Left talking to the ref. Funny how uh, when things are not going your way, the refs, your enemy, when things go well, <laughs> he's doing a great job. Williams, second attempt is good. And we're down to just a five point ball game. Hand check called on Polarka. By the way, that last foul on Scott uh, was the seventh for IBFW. So shooting fouls the rest of the way for South Dakota State. Only one more to give for the Jackrabbits, and the Dons will be shooting. So we may not beat that snow after all. Yeah, it's going to get slow around here. <laughs> Blackmeyer. Burrows, Burrows around Sargent, driving to the bucket, the big man can't finish. Scramble for the ball, still on the floor, still on the floor, here come the Jackrabbits. They got numbers, because two Dons are on the floor. Moss spinning, and bucket. Three point game. Coach still hadn't called that timeout. Well, he's, he's gonna get the media timeout next dead ball now. But, uh, he may need to call one himself. It was an 11-point lead just moments ago. DeWitt hangs and draws the foul. So he's going to get to go to the line when we come back from the timeout. Don's clinging at this point to a three-point lead. Let's see if they can hang on when we come back. Plays it. The fans scream it. Arnie's Army is on a mission bringing national caliber Division I IPFW men's volleyball action to Fort Wayne. Tickets to these and all the games are available now at the Gate Center ticket office or at the door. Salam. Yeah. Salam. Hey, you are. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs are making it happen. Come to. Through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding around the world. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Back here in the Coliseum, 11 minutes, 46 seconds to go. IPFW was up 11 just a few moments ago. Now up just three points to Witt Scott going to line to shoot two as we head back out onto the floor. And now we we always talk about breaking the halves up into five minute increments. And uh, right now the Dons have lost the last two. Yeah, we're down six points this half, 11-17. And uh, we started this half the way we started the first half. And one of our halftime keys were mental toughness and starting the way we finished. But we started the way we started. Yep. DeWitt able to stop the bleeding momentarily with free throw. Second one, no, comes off the front of the rim. So four point game. Here's Sergeant. Moss up top. Berte swinging elbows like crazy. That brought Coach Fife up off the bench. And now a foul called on Burroughs against Berte. Yeah, Burroughs, uh, he got even. Uh, when, uh, when he got elbowed, he went and uh, he kind of checked the guy right in the chest and got even. What sometimes in basketball, your motions and your drilling and get the best of you. but. Burroughs has got to keep his head clear because the Dons are still in the lead and we don't want to lose this game on account of not thinking. Looked like his mouth is bleeding. Ref, you got to call it, ref. Hey, he just got hit in the mouth with an elbow. He's having to come out of the game. Uh, yes, that's the proof that the ref missed one. 
refs are all over, or the uh, crowd, I should say, all over the refs. The ref has to know he missed that when you see blood, huh? Gonna be one and one for Berte. If we can take another look at that uh, replay and see if we can see the elbow delivered by Berte. And you see it right there, smacks him right in the side of the face. And there is no doubt, and of course, Jerron didn't appreciate that much and then has the nice <laughs> little stiff arm for him, but I gotta think that Berte came out on the, the top end of that one. He knocks in the first free throw. It's almost like the kids, he hit me first. You know? <laughs> saying he didn't mean to do it, but I don't think you don't, you don't have to foul intentionally for it to be a foul. I mean, people don't foul on purpose until the end of the game. Hey, right, exactly. So one out of two for Berte. We're back to a three-point game. Little too close for comfort. Nice pass. Carson back in the game after he left with a bloody face. Can't finish. Here's Callahan, he's got moves. Up and under, no. DeWitt, the rebound. Jack Rabbit's a physical team. They seem to be getting more physical as this game goes on. Here's Demetrius. DeWitt, gotta hit that shot, and does. <laughs> Huge basket, huge basket. Yeah, it was very big, especially with Burroughs on the bench. And you can see the training staff down on the other end of the floor feverishly trying to get Burroughs back in the game. Blocked by Carson down low. And then Carson, I think, is gonna be the one called for the foul. Tommy, before this game is over, it's gonna get real, real physical. <laughs> it does look like that. that could be the case. Second on Carson. Here's Williams. 68% free throw shooter, misses the first. One of three from the line tonight, to make it two for four. And full timeout called by Scott Nagy. He wants to talk things over. His team's down by five points. We're going to take this timeout with him when we come back. More of Mastodon basketball. Living with diabetes is the pets. When I wake up, the first thing I have to do is check my blood sugar. I just want to feel like all the other kids without pricking my fingers or injecting myself with insulin. Diabetes is rough on my whole family. When I was diagnosed, my mom couldn't stop crying. But imagine a cure. Right now, as many as three million children and adults are living with type one diabetes they will never outgrow it. Some will face complications like kidney failure, blindness, and heart disease. That's why the science the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is supporting is so critical. Imagine a cure. For tickets to IPFW athletic events, you can call 260-481-6000 or go to IPFW's athletic website, GoMastodons.com. Basketball tickets are available at the Coliseum box office as well. Back to live action here at the Coliseum. We are at the midway point in the second half. Five-point lead for IPFW. They're trying to expand on that right now as Demetrius Johnson working on Berte draws the foul down low on the drive. <laughs> yeah, Scott Nagy is something. He says it's all ball. Interesting take on that. Four fouls now on Berte. Interesting perspective. 
how a guy's body stops in midair and goes backwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's all ball. Seems like his team never fouls and ours always does. Does seem that may be the case. But Berte's gonna have to sit with the four fouls. Burroughs now checking back into the game for IPFW. Bots will take a seat. You know, I was thinking since 816 is one of your wife's favorite spots, maybe she could, she's probably there now, she can get us a couple. Yes, that's have true. Day after day. In the next commercial break, I'll give her a call. And maybe <laughs> she can swing by. I think we need a full pie at this point. <laughs> I could probably do about seven myself. <laughs> All right, so back after the uh, after the free throws, 52 to 46 is your score. Got a foul there, and we're waiting on the ref to show us what happened. Dan Baran is uh, the beneficiary of that foul. He's going to the free throw line because we're in the bonus, obviously. And he's going to be on Burroughs, his third, and. And we want to let you know about 2008 Pink Out. Uh, get out to Pink Out is what we want to tell you. Saturday, February 2nd at the Coliseum. Uh, and honor breast cancer survivors. Wear something pink and come out for an afternoon of great basketball as the Mastodons take on North Dakota State in a doubleheader. See two games for the price of one. The IPFW women play at 1 o'clock. The men will follow at 4 o'clock. Portion of each ticket sold will be donated to the American Cancer Society. Um, so it's just a, a fantastic uh, event that the, that IPFW is putting on, and something that we definitely wanted to share with you during this broadcast. I think as many people as can ought to participate in that breast cancer's touch and affected so many lives. I think as many people who can ought to get involved with that cause. Chris Perkins three won't go. Kind of had a whole lot of nothing happen in the last minute or so. We're sitting at 52-46. Lob pass down low, up and in for Moran. You stated it earlier, whenever you seal and you've got the guy on top of you and your free throw line extended, you're always going to get that. He's has done a be, great job of that all night. Has to be some help side. Double team, Demetrius goes right around it, and then he's called for a walk. This game has taken a big shift, hasn't it, Tom? Yeah, I'm not sure where that walk came from, but either way, it goes back over. And whistle away from the ball, and it's gonna go against the Jackrabbits on Callahan. Somebody's gotta go back and help and get the ball. All right, so David Carson inbound it. Still just a four point game here from the Coliseum. Demetrius down low to Burroughs. Double team came right away. Swing it. Too late. Nice recovery by the Jackrabbits. Turnaround shot by Carson is good on the baseline. Beautiful shot. Faced up, looked at his options. Shot right over the defender. Pop. Rand looks it over, gives back to Callahan. Now they swing it left side to Sargent. Up top to Loney, that's Michael Loney, just fresh into the game, double team down low. Rand steps through and then draws the foul. Tell you what, he's a workhorse. That guy's going after it. Another timeout on the floor. Gonna be free throws for the Jackrabbits when we come back, trying to pull to within four points of IPFW. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? <gasps> Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. <laughs> Funny. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. 
say it. The team plays it. The fans scream it. Arnie's Army is on a mission bringing national caliber Division I IPFW men's volleyball action to Fort Wayne. Tickets to these and all the games are available now at the Gate Center ticket office or at the door. Last couple minutes we've seen the Jackrabbits pull closer. Barron able to get that nice high-low lob going. But then David Carson, the turnaround jumper on the baseline. Now we came down here to the other end and a foul was called. The third foul actually on David Carson. Both teams right now starting to get in a little bit of foul trouble. Double bonus situation for South Dakota State for the rest of the way. And one foul away from double bonus for IPFW the rest of the way. Looks like that snowstorm will start while we are here. <laughs> Baron eyes up the second one and knocks it through. All right, so back to a four-point game. You're kind of waiting for one team or the other at this point to go on a spurt. We've been sitting at this six to four point as the way Scott maybe has started something as he rattles in a three. That's his fourth three on the night, and whenever you're shooting four for seven, 17 points, the way has come to play today. He needed a big game. Yeah. Barron tries to answer no. Rebound, however, by Loney, finds a cutting Callahan, Sergeant, I should say, and he gets it to Barron. Nice recovery by the Jackrabbits. Another offensive board hurting the Dons, right now being out-rebounded heavily in this game. 38 to 19. Wow. I think you can attribute that to that physicalness. Hot hand! With Scott putting him on his back. I'd know who I'd pass the ball to if I had it. The shooter is feeling it. You want to feed him the rock as much as you can. They back out to an eight-point lead after back-to-back -back three balls by the senior. Sergeant tries to answer, almost gets it stolen as he went up with it. Nice recovery to even get it back. Now Callahan out up top. Crossover, two on the way, no. Horan, and a foul called down low on Burroughs. Four on Burroughs, Coach Fife has an important decision to make because he's really our only, or one of our only consistent uh, inside threats. I think you gotta leave him in there at, yeah. at this point, 6.22. Yeah. I don't know, maybe he's gonna take him out and switch some things around. Yeah, he's gonna he hit him out. He is gonna take him out. Yeah, maybe bring him back in around the four minute mark. And I believe Coach Fife brought him out because what happens is, is the opposing coach says, listen, he has four, right. go after him. And then when you have to let him score, the game is too close to have to do that. So you gotta bring somebody in who has some fouls to give. Shuffling and rotating going on here on the part of the Jackrabbits. Larkin is going to check back in. Loney comes out of the game. All right, so Demetrius will walk it up the floor. No hurry with a six point lead. Get the ball to DeWitt. This is an interesting lineup. Coach Five hands out there right now. Demetrius trying to create, can't get the drive to go. Don's have to be strategic in shot selection. The Burrows on the floor, a little more liberty. And Williams gets one to go on the baseline. Now a four point game. A little bit of token pressure applied on the inbound. 
Four point ball game, Tommy. Key stretch here in this game. Coming off the curl, DeWitt, rainbow won't go off front iron. Here come the Jackrabbits. No surprise, I tell you, the coach for the Jackrabbits, he teaches physicalness. Those guys are physical. They lay on you, they, uh, they make it hard to keep going. You know, when somebody lays on you all the time, it takes a lot of your energy. Shot clock winding down right now. Pilarka to the foul line. Kai Williams, three ball, no. Fight for the rebound. And that is going to go against Barron down low, fighting for it. I'll tell you, Barron is a guy, when I say physical and I say team, I really mean him. That guy is hard to deal with. And he doesn't care if he hurts you. He doesn't care if he pushes you. <laughs> He'll lay on you. I mean, he's sweating extra hard. He's working hard. you got to give it to him. But the guy is physical. Well, he just picked up his fourth foul, so maybe we can get him out of there quickly. Sure it wouldn't hurt, would it? No, they need to get him out of there, especially if Burroughs is going to sit for any lengthy amount of time, although you got to think that Jerron will be coming back in here shortly as DeWitt misses the front end. DeWitt has doubled his average. He averages 10. He's got 20. Hopefully 21 with 4.44 to go. And gets the second one to go back out to a five-point game. And Williams scores with the foul. DeWitt going to get called for that foul. That was a big, big bucket. Third on DeWitt. Burroughs continues to sit. Now at some point, you got to wonder what we're waiting on. If it gets to a two-point game at the 430 mark, you got to get Burroughs back in that game. All right, two-point game, 430 to go. Anybody's ball game at this point. Nice ball pressure applied by the Jackrabbits out top on our guards. Makes it very difficult to get to the basket and make an inside entry pass. See how the Dons deal with the pressure. They're doubling off of every screen on that corner. Botts thought about the three. Six on the shot clock. Johnson, three is good. That is a huge shot. Patience is a virtue. Absolutely. Very patient on that particular possession, and it paid off big time. Barron down low, Sergeant no. Barron tips it out of bounds. It'll go back over to the Don. Last media time out. We have the home stretch when we return. See if IBFW can hold on when we come back. Go to class and I want a degree that's gonna mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's gotta feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Coming up this month on IPFW Up Close, do you remember how you paid for college? How are your kids going to pay for it? Would you like some help? Well, we'll talk about financial aid and that all-important FAFSA document. Are you looking for a quick cultural getaway? How does Shakespeare and the Windy City sound? Going green is more than a marketing slogan for a lot of people. See how an IPFW Habitat for Humanity project is using sustainable design to build one family's dream home on Up Close Sundays at noon. 3.39 remaining here from the Coliseum. Tommy Shegler along with Keon Henderson. 64 to 59 is our score. 
It has been a roller coaster of the second half. Dons have led by as many as 11. It's gotten down to as few as two. They've maintained the lead the entire time, however, and right now they're up by five with the ball and a key, key possession. Tell you what, I'm looking at Demetrius Johnson. This guy is an all-around player. He gets the ball, he distributes it, he can shoot it, he's unselfish, he's in control. Great player. 13 points, 10 assists so far tonight for Michi. Good to see him back and healthy. Carson gets into the lane, bounce pass out to Perkins. Nice shot off glass for Perkins. All that a slide shot. He slid in between two defenders, put it right off the glass, kissed it right off the basket. Back out to seven, and depending on what happens defensively here, that could be the icing. Not going to happen, though, because Barron is able to convert right away back in the other end. Kind of hoped that that was going to start a little mini run for the Dons. Pull away for good. All right, this is Demetrius working on Moss. Cross court to the hot hand, DeWitt. Scott can't hit on the three this time. Carson, a big offensive board. That's the rebound we've been waiting for. Maybe they can give the coach that tech that we've been petitioning for from the first half. <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he has been teetering the entire game. It's been actually kind of fun to watch him realizing where the line was. And I think at first he was kind of wanting to get one. As the game got closer now, I'm not sure he really does. Two minute mark. Demetrius shakes, bakes, and draws the foul. I'm pretty sure that once the coach for the Jack Rabbits feel that this game is over, he'll probably still get <laughs> Yeah, one. we may still, we may see one here yet. The show's not over. <laughs> All right, so now we got to knock down our free throws down the stretch here. Johnson not able to convert on the front end. Scott Nagy said, ball doesn't lie. <laughs> Two costly free throws there. Now, those are big misses. Just got to defend the basketball now. Sergeant. And Perkins comes up with the steal. Nice play by Chris Perkins right there. The senior out of Illinois coming through. Guess what the doctor ordered. I believe I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Oh, nice man. crossover by Misha. Three. Oh, Botts doesn't miss many of those. What Kai a Williams use. picks it from behind. And a steal coming the other way. Quick timeout by Dane Fife. A smart timeout by Coach. He wants to get a quality shot here. Because really, a bucket here may put this one away. Boy, that was a fantastic defensive play coming from behind to be able to come away with the steal. Because I'm not sure if that shot by Bonds, even though it was an open one, was one that Coach wanted. All right, we want to tell you about IPFW's athletic website. It's a lot of fun to go on GoMastodons.com, check up on your team's players, order tickets. It's the official Mastodon Athletics website. I think I've plugged it before. I go on it all the time. It's a lot of fun. Rudy Jovich does a great job with that website. The thing gets better and better every year. That <laughs> it does. does. I remember I, when it first came out when I was here. That is no doubt true. In the uh, five, six years that I've been here, vast improvements. All right, let's see what Coach came up with coming out of the timeout. This is a key possession. Up five, just over a minute to play. Here is Demetrius. Over to Perkins, very patient. Can get it under the minute mark on this possession, no problem. Botts pulls it back out. Eight on the shot clock, fans calling it out. DeWitt to Perkins. Perkins hits it in with two on the shot clock. Boy, Coach Five couldn't have wished for anything better than that. Seven point lead, and now the Jackrabbits will have to scramble. 
And Scott Nagy calling a timeout to talk it over. Full timeout here. 44 seconds left to go. Seven point game. The Dons look like they may be able to end that losing streak. We'll see if they can when we come back. Okay, we're staying here and that just gives us more time to talk about what the Dons have to do in this last 44 seconds, Keon. I mean, it's obviously really important to D up here on this possession, but let's take a look at this last possession. I mean, clock winding down on the shot clock. There was two seconds on the shot clock when the ball went through, and that's exactly what you want. Yeah, that's what you want. You want to get that ball in. You don't want to settle for a long shot. You want to try to get a layup, possibly get a foul. And uh, hey, ball went in. We're up seven. 44 seconds to go. Jackrabbits are trying to draw something up. Hopefully, Dons can come out on top. Boy, IPFW needs this win badly. They come out of the timeout needing just one quality defensive stop and this thing's probably over. Moss gets the inbound. They have to go to work quickly. Quick screen. Nice play drawn up by Coach Nagy, but they missed the shot. Callahan not able to convert. Now they'll be forced to foul and they will send DeWitt to the foul line. And one of the, uh, the most comical things I've heard all night is when DeWitt dribbled that ball toward half court and he tried to pass it, somebody in the audience said he was shooting. <laughs> <laughs> that's not home cooking. <laughs> all right, so DeWitt to the line, looking to put this thing away. 21 on the night, way over the season average, 22 now. 87% free throw shooter, so he's not the one you want to foul. Second one is good. So IPFW is going to end their two game losing streak. The woes continue for South Dakota State. They've now lost six of their last eight. Scott Nagy wants timeout. And even in the way that he called the timeout, it appeared that maybe he wanted a technical. Quick 30 second job. I guess if you don't want your players to stop playing, you can never stop coaching. No, that's definitely true. And you know, while we have a second, obviously it looks like IBFW is going to move on to a win here tonight. And that brings us to Saturday's game. Uh, February 2nd at the Coliseum. It's get out to pink out to honor breast cancer survivors. Wear something pink. Come out for the afternoon. Great basketball. It's going to be a men's women's doubleheader against North Dakota State. Uh, the women play at 1 o'clock with the men to follow. A portion of each ticket sold is going to be donated to the American Cancer Society. Um, so make sure that you get out and do that on Saturday afternoon. If you're not snowed in, let's hope we've, we've dug ourselves out from, from the uh, snow at that point. Fouling out on the play is Kai Williams. He just was really never able to get going. Yeah, we really had our radar on him. And you would hope that uh, some of the Don's defense had to do with you know, him not performing at the level that we were expecting him to. Absolutely, and he didn't have many open looks tonight. I thought the Don's did a, a very nice job. DeWitt adds to his game high. Now 24 points. Twenty-five for the senior. Callahan, Sergeant rises but cannot hit. And then Barron gets the foul on Botts on the way down to the rebound. It is my hope that that is the last foul of the day. You may be right on that one. I can tell you for sure it's the last foul for Barron on the day because he's just <laughs> fouled out. <laughs> He's going to take a seat. Go, 
All right, here's Botts. And Botts, a rare miss from the line. Have to look it up, but I would assume that he is pretty strong from the line. He's only shooting 64 as a team. We were shooting 75 in the first half, so we definitely dipped a little bit in that area. 73-61. Moss right to the hoop. Three seconds left, and that is going to be your final. A 10-point win for IPFW, 73 to 63. Dane Fife and the Dodds and a two-game skid. They get back to 500 in the Summit League, and uh, more importantly, they start out this mini homestand on the right foot. So we're going to take a quick break, and we will be back, talk a lot more about this uh, win. We'll be joined by uh, assistant coach Beret when we come back here on the post game show. 73 to 63, your final. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2,400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. The power's out, but you've planned ahead and your food safety plan is on. You've stocked up on shelf-stable foods and a can opener in case you're in the dark for a while. You don't open the fridge, foods there will be safe for up to four hours if the door stays closed. You keep the freezer shut too and you've kept it full. A full freezer will keep food frozen for about two days. A half full freezer, about one day. For longer outages, you move cold foods to an insulated cooler with plenty of ice or freezer gels, and you use a thermometer to ensure foods remain no higher than 40 degrees Fahrenheit. If the power returns quickly, you make sure freezer foods have ice crystals and check foods in the refrigerator with a food thermometer to make sure they're at 40 degrees or below. If not, or if there's any doubt, throw it out. To learn more, log on to AskKaren.gov or call the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Meat and Poultry Hotline at one mp hotline A message from USDA's Food Safety and Inspection Service. The shirts say it. The team plays it. The fans scream it. Arnie's Army is on a mission bringing national caliber Division I IPFW men's volleyball action to Fort Wayne. Tickets to these and all the games are available now at the Gate Center ticket office or at the door. IPFW a 10-point winner here at the Coliseum tonight. They beat the snow and they beat the Jackrabbits along the way. Tommy Schegler joined right now by assistant coach Dan Beret. Coach, you know, you end a two-game skid. That's always a good thing. And uh, there were a lot of things to come away with tonight with a smile on your face about uh, Demetrius Johnson played unbelievable, as we were just talking about. Right. And DeWitt Scott was fantastic as well. Yeah, you know, we came out a little bit flat at the start, uh, almost like we did versus Centenary a couple weeks ago. And we kind of challenged them there at the first media timeout. And we knew we had to set the tone because although the South Dakota State, their record may not be very good, but they play hard, and we knew that they were going to play hard. But, you know, Meech gave us some good energy off the bench, and uh, it's good to have DeWitt Scott shooting it the way he did tonight. Uh, that always helps things. And then Jerron Burroughs was a presence down low once again. Is this where you felt like you would be at at this, at this point in the year, or do you feel like this team has not yet realized its potential and there are bigger things to come over the course of the next 10 or so games we have left you know i think we let a couple slip away from us you know we we haven't won a road game yet and, and we're still fighting that battle and until we get over that hump it's going to be a struggle for us i think at western illinois we didn't give our best effort and when we played south dakota state and brookings you know they beat us pretty good i think the final score was about 13 or 15 points mm -hmm. uh, so when you think about those things you know i don't think we're right where we want to be but we've been pretty good at home uh, with the exception of Oral Roberts, we're undefeated in the league, and we played Oral Roberts tough. You know, a couple things just didn't go our way late in that game. So I think we'd like to be a little bit better shape, but uh, we want to be peaking at the right time, and, and hopefully that happens for us. You mentioned uh, how tough this team can be, uh, the South Dakota State team, and I talked to Coach earlier this week. He mentioned that uh, toughness was something that you guys have really been preaching. Were you impressed with the way your guys responded? You mentioned it came out flat, but I thought once they did kind of wake up, 
last 12 minutes of the first half incredibly aggressive and really were the aggressor in the game. Yeah, I think so. And in practice, we have been challenging their toughness because we haven't been playing as tough as we want to. So we've been doing some different uh, competitive drills uh, to kind of spice some things up. And I think, like I said, after the first media timeout, you know, in that second 10 minutes of that first half, we really got some things going. I think they had 10 offensive rebounds in the first half. But I think about four or five came on one possession. So after right. that possession, I think we really did a better job uh, with our energy and overall toughness. Guys, let's talk a little bit about a couple of the players. I mean, who are the guys that you feel really strongly about that are, that are doing the things needed to be done? And who are some of the guys coming into these next couple games? After the home game on Saturday, you go on the road for three. Who are the guys that you guys need to step up to really get a run going here? Well, I think that Jerron Burroughs always needs to be solid inside, and he has been all season for us because the way our offense works, we're going to start inside and then work it back out. Right. Uh, but then we need energy you know, from guys like Jakari Johnson, Chris Perkins, and Demetrius Johnson because those guys are energy guys that can really provide a spark to our team. And then we need to have DeWitt Scott and Ben Botts uh, making shots. And then, you know, we need some some role players around there with Dave Carson and, you know, some different guys coming in off the bench. But I think ultimately it needs to be uh, Jerron Burroughs inside with a little bit of DeWitt Scott and Demetrius on the outside. Real quick, we only have a couple seconds left, but Saturday what do you got to do against North Dakota State if you had to pick one thing? Well, I think we need to stop Ben Woodside. He uh, He's always beat us, but we've always beat them at home. So I think we need to contain what he's doing. But they're, you know, they got a, some leadership with their juniors, but I think we should be okay if we come out with the same energy we did tonight. And Bray, thank you very much. Ten-point win for the Dons. We will be back after this. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. When it comes to dogs, cats, and kids, sharing just comes naturally. They share their toys, their beds, even their favorite snacks. But pets and people can share other things as well, like disease. Zoonotic diseases are illnesses that can be transmitted from animals to humans, like leptospirosis, or diseases that affect both people and pets, like Lyme disease. Fortunately, you can help reduce the risk by visiting your veterinarian. Your veterinarian can help protect against zoonotic disease and potentially harmful parasites. Most important, a wellness exam from your veterinarian twice a year can help detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So share affection, not illness, and ask your veterinarian about zoonotic disease protection for all your loved ones. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions? Eat your pizza, man. Funny. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Tommy Schegler along with Keon Henderson. We're going to take a look at the highlights. Don's get a 10-point win tonight. They were up by nine at the half. But, hey, the Jackrabbits made a run, made this thing close. It was the hot shooting in the midway point of DeWitt Scott. Boy, did DeWitt have a coming out party. Back-to-back -back threes, as you see right here, he ended up with 25 points. He was 5 of 9 from behind the arc. Dan Baran was very good for the Jackrabbits. Down low all night, misses on that three-point attempt, but ends up getting it back, getting it under. He had 22 points for Ben Baran. He was the leading scorer for the Jackrabbits. But DeWitt, man, he was the man. 25 points, as we mentioned. Keon, we got to go. Thank good you very much, you. sir. Have a good one. All right, we'll see you later.